For those with hard-working tow vehicles, Bendix now offers the perfect electric brake controller solution with the Bendix Ultimate Tow Electric Brake Controller. In this Bendix Trade training video, we're going to run through the installation process. Please note that this install should only be completed by a qualified automotive technician. Now in terms of legal requirements, if your trailer has a gross trailer mass of 750 kilos, that's the weight of the trailer with everything in it, or below, then you don't need trailer brakes. Anything with a gross trailer mass between 750 kilos and 2000 kilos needs to be fitted with a mechanical or electrical braking system. Anything over 2000 kilos and your trailer or caravan must be fitted with electric or electric over hydraulic brakes and an electric breakaway controller. If your trailer or caravan has an electric braking system, an electric brake controller is essential. The Ultimate Tow Electric Brake Controller uses its own unique braking algorithm and allows you to easily adjust your braking force and operate the override function. It's also one of the easiest electric brake controllers to install on the market today, coming fully programmed, offering easy installation and boasting a compact, easy to mount remote head. First things first, you'll need to disconnect your vehicle's negative battery terminal. Next, find a suitable mounting location in the cabin for the brake controller. I'm going to tuck mine up here under the dash. Hold the brake controller in the selected position like so and mark the hole location through the holes in the flanges of the unit. Then grab a suitable drill bit and drill holes in the marked locations. You can either secure the brake controller in place with the provided self-tapping screws or the soft nylon fabric fastening hook and loop straps or the double-sided foam adhesive pad which we're doing which is also provided in the kit. Next, we can look at fitting up the control knob. Find a suitably sized mounting panel on the dash with a wall thickness of less than 4mm and drill a hole for the 8.5mm remote control shaft. From there, you can affix the appropriately sized decal, washer and retaining nut over the shaft and tighten it down. Turn the shaft fully counterclockwise and affix the knob on the shaft with firm, even pressure, making sure that the indicator is facing the minimum position. Plug the remote control lead into the brake controller and from there we can look at wiring it all up. First, you'll need to find a suitable spot in the interior to run the wiring from the brake controller to the trailer socket located on the outside of the vehicle. This will involve the removal of some interior trim pieces. Next, have a multimeter ready and look at the four wires coming out of the controller. White is your ground wire which you can connect to a grounded metal part of the dashboard using either a tech screw or an eye terminal and bolt, or connect directly to the negative battery terminal which is what we're doing. The black wire is the positive voltage power supply line which will need to be hooked up to a 12 volt power source with the supplied 15 amp blade fuse fitted. In our case we'll be running this wire directly to the battery. For this, you'll need to purchase an extra length of wire, an eye terminal and some cable ties to tidy everything up. You'll also need to find a grommet in the firewall to push the wire through to the engine bay. Be sure not to connect this wire to the fuse panel or any accessory wiring as this can damage the vehicle wiring or cause trailer brake failure. Also, be careful not to reverse the black and white wires as this can damage the brake controller unit. The red wire connects to the brake switch and must be connected to a point that receives a DC voltage equal to that of the supply voltage when the brakes are on. On older vehicles that don't utilise a body control module, you can connect the red wire to the cold side of the brake light switch. The cold side of the brake light switch is the inactive side of the brake light when the brake pedal is not applied. You can identify this with your multimeter by testing the wire for 12 volt power when the brake pedal is pressed and seeing if it turns off once the brake pedal is no longer applied. This will give you the best signal when wiring up the red wire. If that's not an option on your vehicle, at any point that receives a straight DC voltage should work fine. For example, you could tap into the top rear tail light, brake light relay or the wire connecting to the stop lights on the trailer plug, which is what we're doing. On late model vehicles, we don't recommend connecting the red wire to the cold side of the brake switch as this can potentially cause damage to the vehicle's body control module. And then you have your blue wire. This is your brake wire which communicates how braking force needs to be applied to the trailer brakes. This wire connects directly to the trailer brake wire which will be pin 5 on your 7 pin trailer socket. For connections to vehicles with assisted safety systems, the protection blocking diode included in the kit needs to be fitted from within pin 6 with the other end wiring up to the brake pedal switch. If unsure if your vehicle requires this blocking diode, consult the vehicle's workshop manual. 
Once the brake controller is wired up, reconnect the negative terminal and from there we can look at setup and operation. To set the brake intensity, rotate the controller knob until the required braking level is achieved. A clockwise knob rotation increases braking force while counterclockwise decreases it. To activate the override function, simply push on the adjustment knob. The override function applies the trailer brakes without applying the vehicle brakes, useful if the tow vehicle begins to sway or enter a tail wag situation. Next, familiarise yourself with the LED indication on the controller knob. A solid state glow means that the trailer and brakes are connected and all systems are okay. If the light is flashing, this means that the brake pedal has been pressed, the controller is actively braking, or the override has been pressed. No light means no power, or the trailer is disconnected from the vehicle. If you come across any RF interference, refer to the fitment guide included in the kit for troubleshooting steps. The Ultimate Tow Electric Brake Controller is load activated, meaning it cannot be tested without load. Once you've confirmed that everything is hooked up correctly, you'll need to take your tow vehicle out for a test drive with your trailer attached to confirm that everything is working as it should. Before towing, ensure that any towing equipment fitted to the vehicle is appropriately rated to the vehicle's tow rating. For instance, if the vehicle is rated to 3500 kilos, ensure that the tow bar, receiver hitch, tow ball and safety chain shackles are rated to over 3500 kilos. And there you have it. The Bendix Ultimate Tow Electric Brake Controller offers simple, straightforward installation and is an absolute must for your tow vehicle. It's now available from all good Bendix stockists. Bendix, put your foot down with confidence.